from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. part to the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. Join us on Praise the Lord from the Mid-South, Memphis, Tennessee, as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teaching to encourage and inspire and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, I'm Pastor Stephen Brown. I pastor church, Light of Glory International Church, a.k.a. Logic, the church where it just makes sense, right here in Memphis, Tennessee. And we are so excited to be at TBN Studios today uh, with this wonderful Praise the Lord taping. I don't know about you, but I am ready to pr praise the Lord for all of his goodness and all of his mercy. Listen, I have some wonderful guests in the studio with me today, so I need you to call somebody, text somebody, tweet somebody, do what you got to do. Let them know that we're coming right now into your homes from Memphis, Tennessee, with some wonderful pastors and some wonderful psalmists. I have a prophet in the house today. The studio audience is packed. We are ready to praise the Lord. Listen, if you have something up before the Lord and you need someone to touch and agree with you in prayer, I want you to call the number right now. All right, our local number here at the studio is 901 396 9119. We have prayer warriors standing by right now, ready to receive your call. You can also go online and uh, submit your prayer request to www.tbn.org. And let me tell you why this is important. Uh, many times when, you do, when we do these tapings, people call in, and uh, we had one person call in the last time we taped and was on the verge of committing suicide. But they dialed the number from watching this show, and one of our prayer warriors touched and agreed with them. Uh, during that difficult situation, she put the gun down or whatever she was getting ready to use, and the Lord spared her life through this show. So let me tell you something. If you're going through something right now, give God a chance, all right? Don't, don't you do it. You dial this number right now and get some prayer. We have some mighty men and women of God ready to pray with you, all right? It's also a blessing to sow a seed. Those who are watching me right now, you can go right now online to tbn.org, and you can sow a seed and partner with TBN. God bless uh, our dear sister Jan Crouch, of course, uh, Paul Crouch has gone home to be with the Lord, but the vision lives on. Thank God for Jan and the Crouch family, and we also thank God for our local uh, studio manager, Tamela Calvin, and just the staff here with the spirit of excellence that allows us to do what we do. So listen, I want you to sit back, enjoy yourself, get ready to praise the Lord with us, call somebody like I asked you to do, because somebody needs to hear what thus said the Lord that's getting ready to come out of one of these vessels' mouths. All right, so would you do that for me? I know you will. Thank you, and God bless you. But listen, we're getting ready to go and uh, enjoy our first song from this wonderful psalmist all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. Her name is Sonia McGuire, all right, from Sonia McGuire Ministries. She's getting ready to sing and minister as the Lord uh, gives it to her. I want you to put your hands together in the studio for Sonia McGuire as she sings, We Praise You. Together right here. Come on, clap. Come on, we come to do nothing but to lift up the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus. And the song simply says, We praise you on today. Listen, we will praise you, O oh Lord, for your great and marvelous words. Thanksgiving and before 
mercy endureth forever and his truth Oh, I know you feel the presence of the Lord right there in your home like we do here in this studio. My God, what an anointed voice. What an anointed vessel. I told you we have some powerful guests today. And my God, I'm just excited. We praise you. In the midst of what a prophetic song and for a prophetic time because the Bible tells us, let everything that have breath praise you the Lord. In the midst of everything that's going on in the world, Brussels, Be Be what's going on in Belgium, and, and what happened uh, even in our local cities and our local communities here in Memphis, man, the murder rate is up to a record number, uh, and it's only uh, April. My God, but we still have to praise him. Yeah. We still have to praise yeah. him, even in the midst of what's going on with yeah. our upcoming election, with all this foolishness that's yeah. going on. Yeah. We still have to praise him. So praise is our weapon and praise is the key. But listen, I want to introduce you to my first guest uh, today. He's a mighty, mighty man of God, a mighty, mighty vessel of the Lord, whom the hand of the Lord rests upon and for many different areas of ministry. I'm so excited he's uh, in the studio with me today. Uh, he's pastor is a, a wonderful church here. He's also recently been consecrated as presiding bishop of a fellowship, and we'll talk about that 
uh, just a little later on in our segment, but uh, he's also uh, just a, a music genius. Amen. And I'm telling you, he, he is just a gifted and anointed man of God. So I want you to put your hands together in the studio and welcome uh, to our TBN family and audience, Bishop David Gillard. Welcome, That's man. That's you, man. That's you, you Pastor. I'm great. I'm great, man. Happy to be here. Man, man. So, so good to have you on. I yes, know sir. you've been here with us a couple times preaching. Yes, sir. Uh, but this is your first time where we get to talk. Most definitely. I'm That's excited. Our first I'm time excited. we get to talk and yes. find out a little bit more about the man of God, yes, David sir. Gillard, man. Yes, so sir. you've been uh, with the Lord a long time, man, been doing your thing. Yes. And, and many different testimonies as we were talking in the back about just how the Lord is just uh, moving in your life. But you pastor a wonderful church here in the city. You're doing wonderful things. Bless you, man. Um, uh, the Faith Center. Yes, sir. What a, what, a, what a marvelous name. And I know the Lord uh, has tremendous vision yes. uh, for you guys. Tell us a little bit about, you know, the Faith Center. How did it come about? What's the vision, mission, plan? Just whatever you want to tell us. Um, the Faith Center... Um most definitely is um, an assignment from the Lord. Yeah. Um, this will actually be, as a pastor, my 10th year pastoring. 10 years. Wow, I didn't know uh, that. 10 years pastoring, um, but I've only pastored the Faith Center for the last three years. Okay. Um, I had the honor and the privilege of uh, taking over my father's ministry oh. uh, seven years ago, which was the wealthy place. Okay. And um, in that season, Pastor Brown, God just allowed me to learn so much right. um, under the tutelage of my father. Right. And um, the the yeses and the noes of ministry, the ups mm -hmm. and the downs of ministry. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I'll never forget it. The Lord spoke to me um, my seventh year, coming up to my seventh year of pastoring the, the wealthy place and told me that my time was up. Wow. And uh, told me that he was establishing a new thing. Yes. And... Um, we put the put our feet to the ground, and um, we started with nothing. Wow. The Lord told me not to take anything from the church. No money, no equipment, not anything. Wow. And uh, he just told me to trust him. And I'll never forget, uh, me and my wife, where we were praying and fasting concerning the ministry, and um, we said we will just invest our own money wow. into the kingdom of God. And a knock came at our door of, of a woman of God uh, who believed in what God was doing. Yeah. And she said, Pastor, um, First Lady, she said, the Lord told me um, to plant a seed to get this ministry off the ground. I need one of those knocks, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I need another one. <laughs> um, but, uh, and from that day forth, um, God just began to bless. The ministry began to grow. And I can honestly say, uh, Pastor Brown, that I've done more in three years wow. than I did in the whole seven years wow. uh, of pastoring the wealthy place. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing, Pastor Man, uh, to hear you under the tutelage of your father. And it uh, doesn't seem like it was anything. It was just like the leading of the Lord to do Most something definitely. different. Most definitely. And so we was going to talk about this a little later, but I think I, we can go ahead and fit this in here now. We was talking about young pastors and young leaders yes. in ministry. And to hear you uh, just talk about how you learn the ups and downs of ministry, the ins and outs, the good and the bad, but you was under the tutelage of your father. Most you were still, definitely. You were still leading, but you was under the tutelage of under. your father. And I always tell young preachers, you know, don't tell me who you're over until tell you me. tell me who, who you're, you're under. under. Right. That's most definitely. And yeah. that's the... So that's, talk about that yeah. a little bit. Just tell me the importance of being under somebody. And you, it was your biological father. I'm sure he's your spiritual father as well. Most definitely. Talk about the importance of that. Um, it's very important. Um, I believe that every pastor needs a pastor and, and needs to have someone that... Uh, a lot of times we get caught up in doing the rebuking but never get rebuked. Come on. And um, we always need somebody that's going to hold us accountable. Um, the problem in the season that we have now is that we have so many young pastors that are full of pride. Yes. Uh, and they want to have uh, the memo or um, the attachment to their name that I did it myself. Right. Um, and it allows them to suppress the help that they need. Yeah. And then the problem is, uh, Pastor Brown, is that we have a lot of fat fathers but skinny sons. <laughs> fathers that that just wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> Fat fathers. 
and skin and, and son. Skin and son. Which Everybody means right. in the spirit realm, the fathers want to eat, but they're not feeding the son. Uh, and, and it has Talk, caused, Bishop. It has caused the body of Christ, and it has caused so many people um, to launch out into pastorship. I tell people all the time, um, if God did not call you to pastor, you might want to be a mechanic. Uh, you, you might want to do something else because there are some things that come with this. So we are, we're living in a time now that we have more churches um, that are covering people, but they're not covered. Or we have uh, pastors that are covered, but their covering has holes in it. Um, so it's, it's affecting the body of Christ now uh, to the point that we just have, uh, as I call it at my church, church gone wild. Um, leaders that have no leaders, have no accountability. Blind leading the blind. The blind leading the blind. And, and it's, it's causing accidents, which, which allows um, that competitive um, spirit to uh, come up. And um, I, I, I told uh, one of the pastors that in our fellowship, I said, the problem with us now, and a, a lot of the reason, Pastor Brown, that there are not a lot of fathers is because the church has went from yes, Lord, to yes, Bishop. And, 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 and the Bible declares that he is a jealous God. Um, and, and when we go from yes, Lord, to yes, Bishop, we see a decline in deliverance. We, we, we see a decline in, in the move of God because man begins to move. Man begins to, uh, it becomes a uh, very thin line between entertainment and the glory. Uh, I tell them at my church, don't, don't, while we are in service, it's no way that you can say the glory is here and you feminine. it. Because when the glory comes into a house, everything comes subject. The child stops crying. The ushers begin to fall out. The ushers need ushers. Uh, the deacons begin to pray. I've been in services when the power of God comes in, God makes his own altar call and raises his own offering. So we, we've got to get back to having the coverings that lead us to God and not their bank accounts. Wow. Wow. That, that's, where, that's where I am. So I, I, <laughs> under my father's tutelage, um, because I'll say this, uh, I'm very, very transparent. The seven years that I pastored uh, were probably the worst years of a shepherd that I've ever been. Because six, six of those seven years was without my wife. <laughs> I, tried to, I tried to pastor effectively without my rib. Yeah. And it calls me, uh, Pastor uh, Brown, that I literally allowed, because I was functioning off of the know-how and not the know-him. Uh, I tell people all the time that your gift, the Bible says our gift make room for us. Yes. But your gift can to do two things. It can make room for you or destroy the room that it made. So I was functioning off of the know-how. I was pastoring off of, it's just I'm a fifth-generational pastor. Just know what to do. I just know what to do. I know when I get a mic to make the people shout. I was, I was preaching deliverance but was not delivered. I was preaching liberation but I was not liberated. In other words, I was functioning Hear this, for almost all of that tenure of pastoring, I was functioning with a mistress. This is what, this is what the Lord told me. He says, he says that your cover-up could never be your covering. And, 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 and I was preaching everywhere, and my prayer was, Pastor Brown, God, the next prophet that calls me up 
Don't allow them to prophesy a car to me. Please tell, please let somebody see that I'm filthy. Because sometimes pride will allow you to function under a power that you really don't have. Wow. And that's where I was. Wow. But my father, uh, because I had a covering, uh, I remember one time I, I, I was getting up, about to get up to preach, and he, he held my knee down in the chair, and he said, you can't preach today. I said, why? He said, because you're filthy. He says, I'm going to have to undergird the church because you carry the title, but you don't carry the anointing. And that's where I was. So that's why fatherhood and ministry is so important because we need somebody to hold our knee when we won't go down to our knees. Wow. Bishop, we have a few more minutes left, man. Uh, I just want to personally thank you for being so transparent. You, don't, you didn't have to say uh, that, but uh, many preachers would never say that on television. Amen. So, man, I, I commend you, sir. Bless um, you. Man. Yeah. But back to the marriage thing, um, you was telling me how the, the Lord restored your marriage. Restored, and, uh, totally. You know, the Bible said, what well, God has joined together, let no man put yes, asunder. Sir. Yes, sir. And I, I, tell, I tell people this all the time in other professions, you know, sometimes uh, pastors are a little jealous of the doctors and the lawyers and everybody else because yes, sir. we're the only profession that we, and I hope people can understand what I'm saying, but we're, we're the only profession that we have to bring our marriage to work. That's good. Oh, that's good. Like the doctor doesn't have to come in the mm -hmm. doctor's office and tell you if his wife is mm -hmm. going through it with him or not, or you know. But the pastor has to bring his marriage to the job every day. That's right. If he's a surgeon and he having marital problems, we don't care, man. Cut on me, get me well. If it's a doctor, we have he having marital problems, man. Look, we don't care. Give me some medicine, get me well. If it's the lawyer, I don't care, man. Just get me off. I don't care what's going on. That's now. right. But if it's the pastor, wait a minute. Now, pastor, you got problems with your wife? Uh-uh. Yeah. I don't want to hear you preach. Ain't nothing you can tell me, <laughs> right? So it's so unfair, but yet it's 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 challenging for pastors to make sure to walk right. That's the most. As well as first ladies, That's because right. so many people are dependent on us. That's right. Do you think that um, that God um, will restore? even marriages now from people who are watching us? Because I felt something in the Holy Ghost. Somebody's watching us, man, who needed to hear that. Do you think that, well, I know you have something to say oh, to, to, to I, pastors I and first ladies who are going through something right now. I definitely know that God will restore uh, Pastor <coughs> Brown marriage. Yeah. Um, I'm a living witness. Um, you're looking at a man um, that me and my wife's divorce was paid off. We were in um, our last court session, sitting next to each other, and we were texting each other, saying, what in the world are we doing? We went, we went, I say it all the time, that we went from the courthouse to the inner courts because God restored our marriage. This was two people that could not be in the same room without drama. Now we can't be in the same room without loving each other. Um, so I'm a firm believer that God will restore marriage. He will make you. And then as, as, as we mess up as men, God will teach us how to handle a crack rib. Uh, in the medical profession, when your rib is crap, they t crack, they tell you to wrap them tightly. Make sure that you keep the pressure on them. The Bible says, and the two become, they will become one. They became one. So in the process of that, we have to learn that trouble come, but it don't last always. Yeah. 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 Bishop, I think we have about 30 seconds left before this segment. Thank you for being here. We got to come back. We got more to talk. I want to get into the fellowship and everything. Yes, we sir. only have one minute. But um, very quickly, what would you tell a young, you talk about spiritual fathers and uh, have young preachers having no cover, what would you tell them in this last 45 seconds about the importance of submit themselves to, a, to authority? I will say boldly that if you cannot submit, you can't lead. Yeah. 
Um, everybody again needs a pastor. You need somebody um, that has went down the road um, that you're trying to drive down. We have too many uh, young pastors now that are driving without license. Yes. Yes. And uh, we, we, I, I, I admonish you to get under somebody that not only has a name, but knows the name. <laughs> I can't take no more of this guy. He's just so, my God, what wisdom coming from this man. My God. Well, I know you were blessed. Listen, we're going into our, our next uh, musical guests or artists. I'm, I'm told of y'all. Yes. Put your hands together for the Logic Praise team. My God. As yes, they sing B. Hallelujah. We serve a big God and he's mighty. He's worthy of praise, honor, and glory. Hallelujah.
I come out, yeah. I come yeah. out of that old storefront church and sanctified church, and the mother just said, we have a big, big, big God. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I feel like we have a big, big, big God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's getting ready to do big, big, big things in Amen. your life. Amen. Glory to God. But listen, if you need prayer, don't forget now, pick your phone up. Dial that number right now, 901-396-9119. Don't you sit there and go through that mess by yourself when we have prayer warriors who are ready to touch and agree with your situation. Amen. The devil is a liar and the truth ain't in him. The thing he told you is a lie. Amen. And I command you to be delivered from whatever you're going through Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Listen, we have another powerful vessel of the Lord. I'm talking about anointed. I'm talking about genuine. I'm talking about multi-talented. I'm talking about just the man, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> he is the man. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Memphis is better because the anointing that's on his life is in our city. And I'm so excited that he's here with me today uh, taping this, uh, this wonderful session. And I know you're going to be blessed by it. I want to welcome to the set and to our TBN family and to the viewing audience, Pastor Terrell Munger. Let's put our hands together. Yeah. Glad yeah. to be here, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Glad to be here, brother. Glad to be here. Man, thank you so much for coming. And uh, man, we, we, we're excited to have you in the studio. Uh, man, just God is just doing phenomenal things in your life, in your, in, in your ministry that God has given you. I asked you, was it One Accord Church or One Accord Ministries? You said it's One Accord. That's right, so it's I One know Accord. You're going to explain the name of this awesome ministry that God has given you. But uh, just welcome, man. First of all, just tell me a little bit about One Accord and what you guys are about, what you stand for, what are you doing, man? Let's, we want to hear it. Well, first of all, it's just. Uh, one accord, every soul counts and every life matters. And the reason I say that is, it's not important that I succeed if we don't succeed. Yeah. And, um, and, the and su like success <laughs> is as you define it. So uh, I can't give you the definition of success. Your thoughts count because your thoughts are going to form your idea of success. It will make no sense for me to tell you what success is. You get it and you're still unhappy because it wasn't your definition. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So uh, one accord is just about you finding your best self mm -hmm. so you can live your best life. Best yeah. self. You can live your best life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. How long have you guys been in operation? When, when did it start? Or did you plant this church? Or? Yes, sir. We planted it uh, in 2011. We've okay. been in existence five years coming up. Celebrate the fifth year yeah. anniversary. <laughs> yes. Uh, and um, <coughs> man, it was a journey. We, we, yeah. we had our first service in, in, in my sister's beauty. Well, hold on. Her hair studio and spa. Her hair you know, studio and spa. Right, right. I Not can't say shop, beauty right. shop. Hair studio and spa. That's right. right yeah. Right. And uh, had our first service, man, uh, with some 20, 30 people. And we just got That's together. Cool. Uh, with one goal in mind, man, at, from the first day I was telling them, I, I want to create a safe place for people to grow. Yeah. I just, because I believe us as shepherds, one thing about sheep, sheep cannot give birth in chaos. You, you, you got to find a safe place. You can't birth the things that are in your spirit if you don't trust the pastor, if you don't trust your members, if you don't trust the things around you. So the first thing I got together with those people and the leaders, First thing we got to do is create a safe place. That means if somebody tell you something, don't you tell nobody. Amen. Because when it get back to them, they don't feel safe anymore. Amen. When you tell somebody you're going to do something, do what you said, or they're not going to feel safe anymore. Amen. And then once we start dealing with the safety of their mindset, then we can start developing that spirit because a lot of stuff we call spirit is really people's mind. And yeah. since our mind's messed up, our spirit is drained. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So as the mind gets a safe place, you start retaining information, not just hearing good information, but retaining information. Right. Once you start retaining, you can start applying it to life, to marriage, to job. That's why I didn't want people to get lost in ministry. We ain't doing ministry together. We doing life together. And I want it to affect every area of life. 
life. So that's, that's what powerful. we are, one accord. That's powerful. I don't want to get off track here, mm -hmm. but I must for just a split second. We were in the back in the green room, mm -hmm. and you just uh, mentioned something that triggered this to come back to my memory. You was talking to me about uh, people going through midlife crises. Yeah. And how we are not to call our own thoughts God when it's not. Absolutely. Could you share that with, with, with our audience and our family? Because that was very powerful, man. Man, the, the word was put in place mm. to help us find our destiny, okay? Yeah. But when we get popular and when we get what we call our strength, we can't redefine God's word. We, we can't take the thing that made us and we remake it. We can't do that. We can't do that. And so what happens is with popularity going on and reality shows going on and cameras in our face, one of the challenges is even though we have a spirit, we have a soul, we still have a DNA. We still have, we're limited by this flesh. And this flesh goes through something we call midlife crisis. Okay. And while we go through that midlife crisis, feeling like we work too much and we've done too much and we've been too responsible and everybody depending on us and we want to be free and we want to be free in front of the camera and we call it God, but really it's midlife crisis. You understand know what I'm saying? And see, but the Bible tells us that he said, yes, you are free, but don't let your freedom become a stumbling, stumbling block. block to others. You understand? Know and yeah, yeah you, you, you're free to merely rock. Do it. At home, don't do it and call it God because now I'm just getting saved. Well, how you get saved is how you get to know God. If you get to know God through only His minute rock, then oh, wait a minute now. Next thing you know, we're gonna be, you know, having stripper poles at the altar. Talking about we worshiping the Lord as we, you know, right? yeah, we worshiping Him. Look, we're, we're, look, we're, and then and then we'll take the scripture where David danced out of his clothes. Come I'm on. coming out of mine, girl. You, you, you know what I mean? Right. And then we'll pervert something that's supposed to be pure. Let's, he, he, he said, if I be lifted if up. If I be lifted up. I, you don't have to lift up nothing but him, and that'll draw me in unto him. But if you lift up some other stuff, it'll draw me in unto you, and now they off track. Because when you go through your midlife crisis, now they in theirs too, and they 20. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> right, man, that's powerful. Yeah. That's 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 powerful, man. And the Bible says, "Don't let our goods be evil spoken of." Absolutely. Right. And, and and let me let me clarify. I don't think that it is wrong. It, right. It's it's not wrong for me to take a shower. I need to take a shower. Right. But I don't need to get my kids out in front of me and take a shower in front of them. I'm talking about, come on now, y'all need to watch me take a shower. Right. No. It's, it's, it's certain places, it's certain times, it's certain things that you must do, right. but you have to do it decent and right. in right. order or it's no longer lifting up him. That's powerful. Yeah. Very transparent show today, man. I'm yes, excited. <laughs> man. I, I know you're being blessed in your home, so I just want you to continue to be blessed, man. But listen, shifting gears here. Man, you're so talented, man. Uh, we watch you on television and uh, your ministry is just uh, doing marvelous things. And, man, you're writing books. Uh, you and your wife do TV shows together, man. Yeah. And, uh, just all kind of dating stuff, man, cool <laughs> stuff. I be sitting in my house just cracking up, man. It be so fun. <laughs> man, and, it, and it's, just, it's just awesome, man. But tell me a little bit about this other side of you with the, with the, with the, with the, with the stage play writing, yeah. and, you know, the writing and the, the book writing, and just this creative side, man, yeah. because a lot of people just don't have that. Yeah. You know, but you have it, man. You're just a brilliant man, man. So tell you, you're not just a pastor, man. You, you like a mogul. You know, <laughs> you're like a mogul, right? <laughs> so tell me a little bit about how God did with you with the playwriting thing, man, and all this stuff. Well, um, a lot of things that I did uh, while I was up on the other people's ministry, and, and I love being obedient. It kind of muffled what I was able to do because I would let them pull bits and pieces of my talent for their vision and their purposes. So it kind of left me constrained. Well, even if something started making progress, I didn't fu feel fulfilled because I saw what it could be and not what they made it into. You know, but uh, when, when I met my wife, it was just so funny. Um, we, we had a debate about relationships and how you're supposed to date and all right. of this. And so we, we debated on for like five, <laughs> six days. And then finally she came and said, you know what, you were right. I said, I was right. I'm gonna write a book about this, this. I'm right, all right. <laughs> you know? So I um, wrote the book and the name of the book was Something She Can Feel and, and that with the emotional needs of women and how men use them to manipulate them. Uh -huh. And so we started doing it. Book, book sold over 5,000 copies. I mean, it was just going really well. And, and, and my, my, I talked to my wife, I said, you know, this ought to be a place. She said, baby, show do it need to be a place. I was like, all right. 
You mean somebody gonna let me do something different? Okay. Yeah. So we, we we turned it into a play, man, and it was successful. We had uh, four sold out performances. We did wow. it at the Lander Center. Uh, many people talking about it. And I found, as with my wife, I found out that even the members of the church, they crazy enough to let me be crazy. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. And so, and 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 we we just believe that God is a creator. Sure. Okay, and we were made in his image and I feel like the best way we can give him honor is to give him back to him Which we create we allow him to use us to create in the earth what he wants to bring to pass And so that's why it's no limits man I mean no I limit. have a dream of owning a production studio making movies making TV shows I mean look, look, look. what I want to do I want to bring Hollywood to the hood, and you know what I mean? <laughs> and just and just give all this talent and all these gifts in the cities, I want to give them an outlet to do some of the things that they dreamed of. Wow. Wow. Well, man, when we first see God on the scene, Genesis 1-1, so in the beginning, God created. Yeah. So we, we see God as a creative being. Absolutely. And you said we're a reflection of him, and we made his image, so yeah. I believe that God... Uh, wants us to be creative. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. People always tell me, but Brown, how did you do this? How did you do that? Why are you so this or that? I said, man, God gave us a brain. Yeah. We, <laughs> we have to use it. Absolutely. And so as long as we're not doing something ungodly and it's not stepping outside the boundaries right. of, of, you know, uh, what we believe in our foundation, man, go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Just bringing glory to God, man, do the doggone thing. I believe it. And so man. I salute you for doing the doggone thing. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Man, you building a church. Yes, sir. Man, y'all building a new facility. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know who them people are clapping, but <laughs> some telling me that that's one accord. Damn, yeah, Lord. <laughs> in the so, house. Man, you're building a church, man, and five years of ministry, that's phenomenal. You're building it from the ground up. Yeah. You're telling me in the bag how uh, things are coming together. You're getting ready to move dirt around, and y'all yeah. get ready to just do it, man. Tell us yeah. a little bit about the new building project. Uh, I want, you know, honestly, personally, as you're explaining it, I want you to tell me how you feel as a leader, how this thing is doing man. on your way on you. I want you to be man. transparent with me, but yeah. uh, tell me a little bit about this building project, man, and, and just... You know, where you go, what you doing, man? Well, I, I tell you, man, I, I feel like um, I'm where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. And part of that is uh, the ability to dream. You know, I believe that the gift that God has given me is to wake up the dreams and passion side of others. I, I believe that uh, when, when, when you stop dreaming, you start dying. You wow. Know, the Bible tells us that where there's no vision, you perish. People perish. You, yeah. you know what I mean? You, you stop where you are. Wow. And, 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 and scripture, scripture backs it up. See, I always have to do so because sometimes I talk crazy. And people think it's not biblical. I have to go get Bible scripture. Yeah. Um, Joseph. Come on. Now, who could have survived in a pit and still been happy? Who, who could have survived as a prisoner and still been happy? The place was what it was, but his dream stayed. I don't care what position you're in. If you keep dreaming, you can make it through it. You can live past it. And I just believe that. So, and, and this is, is, is a part of those dreams because one thing I always challenge myself is don't preach anything to the pre people that you're not willing to live. And, and I never forget, I, I, I spoke a message and I was talking about how the Bible says, you know, well, the soles of your feet shall tread. It will be yours. And, and I'm riding and I saw this piece of land and I said, well, I did just Preach speak that. about, yeah. well, I said, you know what, let me get out the car. Come let on. Me. And so I started walking across the land and walked across the land and, and I called a number and he told me how much it was. I said, yeah, I was walking in vain. Eh? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know how to go over there, you know. <laughs> and I called up uh, one of the other uh, pastors that I work with at the church, and, uh, and you know, we call him Hustle Man. Hustle you know man. what I mean? Right. Uh, pastor Anthony, you know, we yeah, call yeah. him Hustle Man. He right, know right. everybody. Right, right. He, said, he said, well, let me call him. Well, I called the man, and the guy ended up selling the land for a third of the price that it was listed for. <laughs> and... We went and paid cash for it before he changed his mind. <laughs> Hurry up, write the check. And so, man, it, it was a challenging process because we, we've been turned down for loans trying to get buildings. And, you know, and then buildings that we were going to get, we found out it was more problem and it was worth and all of that. And so our theme for this year was create your own. And one of the things that God dealt me with, sometimes you can't find what you're looking for because you haven't created it yet. <laughs> you 
understand what I'm saying. You understand. But anyway, man, so, man, we got together, and I use my, you know, I, I have special geek powers, you know? I'm a nerd yeah. by nature, you mm -hmm. know? So I started putting some stuff together, and we got with some architects, and we got with some different people, and, and, and next thing you know, we got approved for the loan. We had our groundbreaking earlier this month, man, and we about to do some digging up in there, man. Wow. <laughs> I just want to say, uh, I've been taping this show for years. Uh -huh. I've been a host for years. This is the best <laughs> taping I've ever done. <laughs> I've never felt the spirit that I feel in this studio now. Thank you, brother. Man, I just feel, I feel the power of the Lord in here, man. I am honored to be here. My God, very quickly, man, I think we have maybe one, two minutes left uh, in this segment. Uh, you was telling me about a school, man, that's yeah. in the spirit and that, oh, yeah. that was already in fruition in, right. in some type of way. Right. Uh, tell us a little bit about the vision of the school and uh, what God doing with that. Uh, yeah, just real quick, and we're, we're going to house it uh, in the new building, and it's going to be deeply rooted in understanding the African-American in you. Uh, because a lot of us identify with our American, but we're scared of our African. It's a private school or charter school? It's, it's a private school. Okay, private it's school. a private school. Uh, it's more of an educational service. And, and what we want to do, we want to go through history and show them where they played a part so they can stop feeling bad about how they are. You're different for a reason. Your dialect is different. Certain words you weren't meant to pronounce. That's why people, you, when you say it, people say you sound ghetto. You're speaking in your normal dialect. It's not ghetto. There's nothing wrong with how you talk. So let's not talk about how you talk. Let's talk about what you say. Let's start, you, you understand what I'm saying? I better run out of this. I better run out of this. <laughs> and so uh, within the school, we want to dig deep, man, and get them the confidence they need, whether you're going into corporate America, where you starting your own business, you know, because corporate America is a different language. Yeah. And if you're in France, you got to learn how to speak French. If you're sure. in Spain, you got to learn how to speak Spanish. And so we want to know, speak, learn to speak the language. Learn of where you are training. with the heart you're supposed to have. And everything will work out, man. So. Wow, wow. Well, Pastor, man, thank you for being here. My God, what, a, <laughs> what an anointing. I told y'all he was anointed. He was gifted and everything, man. Multifaceted, man. Just the Lord is just working tremendously with him. But listen, uh, we're going to our next song, man. The Logic Praise Team is coming back, and they're singing one of my favorite songs. I want you to worship in your home, because we're getting ready to worship in the studio. <laughs> and uh, they're getting ready to sing my, one of my favorites, y'all. Nobody Like You, Lord. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Your hands and worship with us. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. Who is sing oh. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. I searched all 
There's nobody like you, Lord. Oh, oh. There's nobody like you, Lord. Nowhere, nobody like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh. Glory to God. There's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you. There's nobody like you, Lord. Just lift your hands in the studio, my God. Lift your hands right there in your house. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you. Come on, right there in your living rooms. Come on, let's lift up a worship. Just lift your hands. There's nobody like you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you. Come on, he deserves your worship. Thank you, Jesus. He deserves it, church. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'm telling you, God is up to something. Please call the number right now, 901-396-9119. There's an anointing of supernatural miracles in this studio right now. There's an anointing of supernatural miracles right now in this place. I want you to pick up the phone and dial the number right now. Hallelujah. Prayer warriors are standing by waiting to touch and agree with you. You can also can dial our worldwide number, 1-888-731-1000. Again, that's 1-888-731-1000. Go to the website. Go to the website, tbn.org, submit your prayer requests. All right? Sow a seed right now. There's a supernatural atmosphere in this place for miracles. You can get whatever you need right now because the glory has descended in this place. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hey, glory to God. It's in the house, preacher. Hallelujah. Forgive me, y'all. I told you this is the greatest show I've ever been a part of here. And the glory of the Lord is here. The glory of the Lord is here. So call right now. Sow a seed right now. If you need a supernatural miracle in your finances, trust me, I don't care what it is. Whatever God lay on your heart, you put it in this soil, TBN, that's touching the world. You sow it right now in Jesus' name. Call. Go to the website. Get it in the ground. Watch what God does. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Clap one more time. Hallelujah. <laughs> my God. Listen, my final uh, guest for our interview today is a uh, special jewel to the kingdom of God. He's highly anointed and gifted and talented, and the Lord speaks to him. Uh, I like to call him my personal prophet because I believe every pastor needs prophetic voices in their lives. Uh, in my seasons of, in my tenure of pastoring, God has put prophets in my life in different seasons. And I just believe that, you know, every pastor needs a prophet connected to them. And uh, this man is what I call my personal prophet. When I need a word from the Lord or some insight, what's going on in the spirit, yes, God does talk to me, but sometimes God doesn't show me everything. And just like you, God doesn't show you anything. We prophesy in part, in right? Part. So we need that prophetic voice to speak a word of clarity. And I'm telling you, this man of God has been a blessing to my life, to our church and my family. And so I invited him today to be a blessing to you and to welcome him and introduce him to our TBN family and our audience. I want you to put your hands together and welcome Prophet Zeb Russian. Bless you, man. Bless you, man. <laughs> How thank you God. doing, Prophet? I'm doing excellent, Pastor Brown. I thank God for the opportunity that he's allowed man, us to connect thank... again. Yeah. We're, just, we're just grateful to God to be here. Man, thank you for coming, yes, man. Sir. Thank you for accepting yes, uh, my invitation, man. I wanted mm. to bring you on just let you speak. Uh, as God gave it to you, we'll talk about a few things, but I wanted to introduce you to our TBN family because uh, there are people watching us right now who need a prophetic word. They need uh, a right now word is what we call it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still believe in a, the fivefold ministry, Amen. apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. Yes, sir. I don't care what anybody says. Mm -hmm. 
I believe in the fivefold ministry. Yes, sir. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Yes, sir. And so yes, I thank sir. you for being here. Yes, Man, sir. I know it's the Lord because the praise team was just singing mm -hmm. about the glory of God. Yes. You yes, are my sir. glory, Lord. You are my glory, Lord. <laughs> Yes, sir. We understand that there is a difference between the anointing of God and the glory of God. Yes. The glory of God is what a lot of us believe is missing from our churches. We have a lot of good preaching, a lot of good teaching. The anointing is flowing, but God's glory invading our sanctuaries and our worship encounters and, or even our homes or our personal lives. Talk about a, a little bit about the glory of God. What is it and how important it is in our lives. Well, really, when we think about the glory of the Lord, you talk about Shekinah. Shekinah glory. And that is the presence of God manifested. Yes. It is the presence of God manifested in the natural. Yes. The Word of God, Second Chronicles, the fifth chapter, basically that whole chapter yeah. deals with God's glory. The glory of God. The glory of God. <clears throat> and. Uh, it gave some prerequisites yes. for the glory to manifest. And it caused the, pre the, the ministers or the priests back in that time to do one thing, and that was to sanctify themselves. Sanctify themselves. Consecrate themselves. Yes. And in order for the glory to come in. And the second thing it caused them to do, Pastor Brown, was they had to be with one accord. Yes. See the glory. It's all coming together. Yeah. One see, accord. See, yeah. see, 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 see. It has to be one accord. Yeah. See, glory won't come in when there's competition. Oh, I'm talking, bro. The Holy Spirit never called called us in the body of Christ to compete. He called us to complete. Yeah. Mm. And uh, we got to get our mindset right. Yeah. God is, not con God is not concerned with the Hollywood saint. Hollywood has no place in the body of Christ. Yes. It is his glory. It's not my office as a prophet that gets the glory. Yeah. It's not the fivefold ministry gifts that get the glory. But it's God that gets the glory. So I think we're in a time and we're in a season that we have to point our parishioners, we have to point our brothers and sisters back to God. Yeah. and not to man. Yeah. And I believe that when we have that frame of mind, yeah. the glory of God will show up because it's needed. Yes. You have people that are destitute. You have people that are hungry. You have murder going all through our city. Wow. And if we have over 5,000 churches, Pastor Brown, in the Memphis metropolitan area, yeah. so why is all this going on? We need the glory of God, of God to hit Memphis Shelby County. Yeah. But there has to be some accountability. Yes. There has to be some integrity. Yeah. So it's time out for me. It's time out for us in the body of Christ. We can't continue to preach what we're not living. See, the lifestyle has to line up with the word in order for the glory to come. That's powerful, prophet. We are to complete and not compete. And not compete. <laughs> well, we see a lot of that in the body of Christ, mm -hmm. and especially in our city, Memphis, mm -hmm. Tennessee, mm -hmm. where there's a lot of competition going on. Yes. But I like how all three of these interviews are lining up, man. Every, I feel like the spirit of one accord in the house. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one accord. And mm -hmm. so we are to complete and not compete. Yes. I want to ask you a question, man, because Every pastor can't handle other gifts. Yes. All right? Um, some pastors are intimidated by prophets in their church. Right. Talk a little bit about why you think certain pastors are intimidated to welcome the prophetic in that church, and why is there a competition between pastors and prophets or another fivefold ministry gift in that? When you say we are to complete and not compete, why do you think this is? We had to go back to 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Right, spiritual gifts. Talks about spiritual gifts. You got to know your lane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, you got too many that's in a lane they hadn't been called to. Yeah. And it's a spirit of delusion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to know what you call to. Because right. <laughs> when you know what you call to, you know your connection. Right. That's powerful. 
You follow me? So a lot of pastors, I believe, are intimidated or somewhat, I wouldn't even say intimidated, but right. just don't really have an understanding right. because of their structure, what they've been taught. Right, 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 right. right. But I truly believe you have, you don't have to be afraid of a man of God that when he gives you a rhema word, as long as you can go back to the Logos and find it. Mm-hmm. Meaning that when you speak from the written word mm-hmm. and you get revelation from the written word, you have nothing to be afraid of. That's right. But you got to be afraid of that person that's getting your word because they ate a poke chop. And they got a dream. Mm. But if it's not in the word, it's not of God. That's right. Because the word of God, the Logos, is Christ. So the Holy Ghost, Pastor Brown, comes to bear witness of the word, which is Christ. That's his job. So you don't have to be intimidated by it. And what happens is you've had so many that have distorted Yes. The prophetic word. They think you're weird. But it is a word of wisdom. See, we got the word of knowledge in the church. Are we down on the word of knowledge? But the word of wisdom, what to do and what not to do, when to be or when not to be. Who to be connected to, who not to be connected to. Know what spirit to bring in your church, what, know what spirit not, not to, to bring in your church. That, is, that, 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 will dis, that, that, that will disrupt your flow. Because there are spirits out there. Are you hear what I'm saying? Yes. So we have to recognize by the word of God and still love the person, but know the spirit in the in individual. Not hate them because that's not God's word, but knowing the spirit and recognize. So in other words, I got to know how to love and warfare. Mm. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, so. Sir. These are tools that I believe that when we go back to the Word of God, we begin to exegete the text. Yes. Not eisegete, but exegete. Come on. Meaning that we get in that Word and we study that Word and we get back to Jesus. Yes. We get back to Christ. You know, salvation, you know, you, 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 have, you have that thing about church that salvation is elementary. Right. But salvation is our is our conduit, or I would say our 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 uh, connection to how we grow in God, yeah. because salvation started by faith. Yeah. So we need to get back to that salvation message again, because yeah. we're constantly being saved, Pastor Brown. That's right. So you know, I just really believe with all my heart. You asked the question for the pastors, and I'm going to digress. Is that I really think they need to understand the, the, the practicalness of God's word. And as, they, as you teach the word of God, the word of God tells us that signs and wonders will follow the word. Mm-hmm. So it's not the individual actually performing the word. It's the word in the individual right. that's causing the word to come forth. Right. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah. And I, I agree with what you're saying, man. Uh, <laughs> That word of wisdom thing, that wisdom mm-hmm. thing, who to bring in, who not to bring right. in, what to do, what, what not, not to, to do. do, who to connect with, not to connect with. Mm-hmm. The Bible speaks about uh, the sons of Issachar had the, mm-hmm. the, the understanding of the times. Mm-hmm. And so we have to make sure. That's why every church, I believe, needs prophetic ears and eyes in their local assembly because sometimes we as pastors, we, we don't necessarily see to the degree that the prophet does. All right. Even though we, we're over that house, some priest said, well, he ain't going to see nothing. I ain't going to see. Well, that's not true because I bring, brought people into my church who saw things that I couldn't see as the pastor. And that's why he go back to the complete compete thing. It was no competition because he saw it and I didn't or she saw it and I didn't. It would completed the church. That's right. You understand? So you got to have understanding of the times. And you, you said something was powerful about the exegete, mm-hmm. ex, exegete the text and not eisegete. Mm-hmm. Exegete that for those who don't understand that, that mm-hmm. means the text cannot mean to us what it did not mean to them exactly. when, when it was written. Exactly. All right. We cannot take the scripture and make it mean something to us exactly. that it did not mean to, to them. them. Exactly. All right. That's so right. we cannot make up any revelations. Right. Right. So what That's it right. meant to them. It means to us. It has to mean to us. Yes, sir. In our day and time. But we yes, must sir. build that bridge of contemporary contemporization to make it make sense. Exactly. Does that make sense? That Probably that's sense. powerful, man. Listen, yes, uh, we have a couple more minutes uh, left. Mm-hmm. We talked about the glory of God. We've talked about uh, the relationship with prophets and pastors in the church. Uh, but we see a lot of people leaving the church. Mm-hmm. 
these days. Yes, sir. Uh, people just don't have that stick to itness mm -hmm. like they had in the days of old. You know, the pastor used to be able to rebuke somebody, and uh, the person, you know, even though they had their feelings hurt, you know, they would suck it up, take it like a man or a woman, and keep on growing in God. But now when we see rebuke, man, we see this spirit of offense yes. setting in. Yes. And people now are driven away from the church for, for this spirit. Talk about that, how dangerous the spirit of offense is or, or being offended. Right. Well, I have to carry it back to the word again, Pastor. Yes, sir. In the book of Matthew, the 18th chapter, starting at Pericope, uh, I think it's the 18th chapter mm -hmm. around verse 15. Okay. And it talks about if a brother, where well, it doesn't say it in the King James Version, but I'm just paraphrasing, if a brother offends you, okay, it gives us some principles and guidelines we are to follow. See, if someone offends me, it's not my responsibility to go to someone else and tell them what they did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a man of integrity, if you offend me, I need to go to the source. Yes. Right. So when I go to the source, I cut the devil's head off yeah, yeah. instead of allowing his imps to come in. Yeah. So if I go to that individual that has offended me and they don't hear me, the Bible tells us the second principle we're to do is get two witnesses or one more, two or three witnesses. That's right. Then you go back again and deal with the situation. But those witnesses you take with you, make sure they're not gossipers. Yeah. Make sure the people that you're connected to, they can take some stuff to their grave. So if they can't hold anything, you don't need to take them with you. Right. After that, the third principle is to carry before the church. And what happens is, Pastor Brown, so many are offended because we do the third principle the first time. And what happens is, is there is, there is guidelines we have to follow. There are principles we have to follow. And for that person that is offended, that person that has been offended, it's their responsibility to communicate with the person that offended them. Wow. Not go spread what they done all over the church. Wow. And then, go ahead, I know we got well, to go stop. Ahead, but, but, yeah, I know we got to stop, but uh, you know, I'm just saying, it's, it's a thing, and what, what, what I think, I'm gonna say this, Pastor Brown, I'm gonna digress. Okay. It is my prayer that every person that has been offended with the church would not blame it on God. Yeah. Wow, that's you. Bless you. Mm -hmm. This segment's out of time. I got to bring all of them back. My God, you don't have to worry. There's more in store for you. Don't even worry about that. All of them. My God. But that, if that's you, spirit of offense, listen to this man of God. Amen. Don't blame it on God. Amen. He's not the author of confusion. Amen. Get yourself together. And get back in God's house. My God, that's yeah. powerful. But listen, we're coming to our final uh, musical rendition from the woman of God all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. My God, powerful. I know you enjoy her first song. Put your hands together again as she comes for Sonia McGuire as she sings, uh, I Am Here. Come on, let's receive her. <laughs> let's see how we sit a lick. Come on and just slip your hands up as a sign of surrender in front of him today. This song simply says, I am here. So you don't feel like you can make it Trying to do things on your own All the burdens are too heavy You've been waiting much too long Sitting here contemplating Should I cast my cares on him All the hurts and all the pain I'll give him all of it Laying down everything, needing you to fix me. All of the burdens that I bring, I can make it on my own. Only God and God.
Wow. What a powerful gift again. We thank God for Sonia McGuire, who is just amazingly anointed and gifted. Amen. Uh, and touched by the Holy Ghost. So what amazing presence in this studio. I know you have enjoyed uh, this show. I know you are experiencing a touch from the Holy Ghost right there in your room. If you're feeling what we're feeling here in the studio, I mean, the tears are flowing in the audience. And I know the tears are flowing right there in your house because God is really, he's really ministering to all of us today. And we just thank God for his presence. And we just thank God for everything that he's doing in our lives. Well, listen, I have brought all of our guests back out uh, to the set so we can close out. And we just want to speak some words of affirmation to you. We want to pray with you. We want to give you some just closing things that the Lord has given us. Um, we have just come out of uh, Pastor Munger, what many in the body of Christ call Passion Week, mm -hmm. where, you know, it leads up to Resurrection Sunday, and we uh, just come out of that. And many of us have saw The Passion of Christ, of right. course, what a wonderful movie as it tells the story of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Right. But what does it mean to, to, to live with passion and how important is this passion thing, man? Because many are watching and they've lost their passion. Right. For whatever reason, man, the storms of life, what they've gone through have caused them to get off track, lose their passion, right. walk away from their calling. Talk to us about, man, living with passion. Well, first thing I would say is living intentionally, you know, to, to be on purpose with what you're trying to do. Because when, when you have passion for life and you know exactly what you want to do, it's easier to deal with all the problems that come with life. Yeah. But if you have accepted a life that somebody told you you should live, you're going to mm. tiptoe through life. You understand what I'm saying? Right, right. So the passion comes from knowing what your purpose is. And sometimes you got to step back and say, wait a minute, let me look at this. Because if you don't have a vision for your own life, you don't know how to pick which friends should walk with you. Amen. You don't know how to pick what areas to go in. And next thing you know, you got all these ideas and all your thoughts in your head and you don't know which way to go. And you just start accepting whatever life throws your way. Right. Start stripping yourself down mm -hmm. and find out what is it that you want to do and go after with everything you got. Amen. Wow. Amen. Wow. Woman of God, uh, Sonia McGuire, you are a worshiper. Amen. We have experienced the glory of the Lord through your gift today in this studio, and it's gone through that camera and entered into the hearts and homes of the viewers. Uh, the Bible says that he's looking for true worshipers, those Amen. who don't worship him in <coughs> spirit yes, and in truth. Amen. Can you speak on that, the importance of being a true worshiper? Amen. We actually have to be emptied out. A lot of times we walk around filled up with so many things that life... Wow has offered us. And when it comes time for us to be vessels for God to use, we're not emptied out. And it's imperative that we be empty. No self, not our will, not our way, not our thought, not our sound. Wow. But him, be filled up with his power, his anointing. So when we open up our mouth, the only thing that the people hear and the only thing that people see is God. Amen, wow. that's good. You know, so I'm, I'm gonna always say less of us and the more of him. Yes. You know, you can never go wrong when it comes to emptying yourself out to God, allowing him to do what he does best, and that's to be God. Wow. That's when you'll see deliverance. Mm. That's when you'll see healing take place. Come on. That's when you'll start seeing people stop leaving church the same way they came. Come on. Because there's a shift in the atmosphere that there's takes place shift. when you're emptied out. Yeah. But when you're dealing in self, that's all you're going to get is <laughs> self. <laughs> Right. But when they can experience God, when you're emptied out and they can't see you, but they feel him. Yes. They don't hear you, but their life is being changed. Wow. Empty out. Empty out. That's good. Wow. That's good. Wow. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. You know who she sounds like? She sounds like John the Baptist. Oh, yeah. He <laughs> said, I must <laughs> decrease. Yes. Huh? So yes. he can increase. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And of course, in your field of work or ministry, of course, you understand that we cannot take people to a place that we have not been ourselves. Amen. 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 What a powerful gift. God bless you, woman of God. Pastor, Galad, Bishop, Prophet, I'm going to let both of you bounce off each other or, and close out the next few minutes about the glory of God because um, just talking to you guys, you really want to see the glory of the Lord restored to, to our sanctuaries and our church where we can have experiences where 
when people walk in our churches, they'll know that the power of God, or God is in this place. Yes. yes. And that's intentional. We have to welcome him, be empty. Yes. We have to have passion. Yes. Amen. Yes. Talk to us, Bishop. I, I believe, and you said it best, uh, Pastor Brown, that when they walk into our churches, I was talking in the back about how Eli says, and in 1 Samuel, he hears about his sons who are sleeping with the women at the entrance mm. yeah. of the temple. Wow. Uh, we have to learn how to protect the entrance of Amen. God's house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. we, we don't understand that if we protect the entrance, then we protect people after the benediction. That's good. Wow. Because most of the time, their struggle is suppressed during the service, but it arises at the benediction. My and because God. we don't have, we're building churches because we've learned how to have church without God. Mm. But when the glory of God, I feel him even now, yes. when the power Mother of God Hallelujah. comes into the house, it does not matter who it is. That's it. It'll make the smokers don't want to smoke no more. See, see, see. It'll make the drinker <laughs> sober up. Yeah. So what I'm looking for now, I know that we, we decorate the walls uh, with fine pictures, but I want the power of God to come back into the house that we have canes and medicine back Amen. on the walls. <laughs> and people are being delivered and signs and, and wonders will follow us. And I just believe even now that the glory of God is being restored back to the temple. Yes. Yeah. Because when, when the glory of God comes in, the usher needs an usher. <laughs> yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. The praise team needs a praise team. Amen. <laughs> the pastor needs a pastor. Yes. And I believe that there's even some folks in this studio that are waiting for God to fill the Amen. temple with the glory yes. of God, Amen. that you can get what you need from him. Amen. 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 Last two minutes, man. Talk to me, I man. Got the, the glory of God. I got to connect with the bishop. Yes, sir. I have only one word because he didn't preach. <laughs> I'm going to get a benediction. God, let your glory rest. <laughs> <laughs> let it, we just need the glory to rest. Let the glory rest. He gave us the principle. Now let it rest. Yeah. Jesus. Enough said. My yes, God. Sir. My God. My God. Let's, let's join hands. We're going to pray. <laughs> because, see, we got some people watching us who, who need the glory of God to invade their personal yes. life. Amen. You need the glory of God to invade your situation and in your house. Amen. Amen. We here in this studio, we're touching the green with you right now. Amen. If there's somebody with yes. you in your living room, join hands with them right now. We're joining hands in the studio all. And we're going to touch and agree right now. Father, in the name yes, of Jesus, sir. we thank yes, you, every person Jesus watching. Yes, God, you can get on the low. Yes, sir. Make every crooked path straight. Yes, yes sir. Father, we thank you. Thank that you're the God of miracles, yes. signs and wonders. Yes, God. You're the God of glory. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. Let your Shekinah come. Yes, yes God. Let your kabod come. Yes. In the name of in Jesus. The name of Sit Jesus. on us, Jesus. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. Sit on us, Holy uh, Ghost. Yes, Lord. Wash us. Yes, Lord. Make us whiter than snow. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. Forgive our sins. Forgive us. Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let your anointing rest. Yes, Lord. Let your glory invade yes, our lives. Yes, Lord. As never before. As never before. And we give to you yes, Lord. all the glory, yes. all, the glory yes. all the honor, yes, Lord. and all the prayer. All the prayer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Jesus Jesus name. Thank God. Thank and God. Amen. amen. Clap amen. your hands if you love God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I'm telling you, this has been the greatest show I've ever been a part of. <laughs> I'm not just saying that. Y'all know I've been hosting this show for years. This has been the greatest show I've ever been a part of. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. We love you. We are praying for you. We're not going to stop praying right now. We're going we're gonna to continue to pray for you. I promise you. We're going to touch and agree one more time before we leave the studio. And we're going to pray again one more time for you. I love you. I'm praying for you. Remember, whatever you do, whatever you're going through, don't you ever forget to praise the Lord. Come on, let's pray. We're so glad you've been with us. Oh, praise the Lord. TBN has so worldwide ministry. Many to make gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So write today. Praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. If you haven't asked Christ in your life, call our prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Now until next time, remember to praise the Lord.
This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.